Hey guys, Craig from Thriving Tradies. We're gonna talk about getting a consistent workflow. What most often happens, especially in the early stages of growing your business, is that you get these peaks and troughs, feast and famine. I've got too much work. What do I do when there's too much work? I'm getting calls from everyone, I'm out there, I'm on the tools, I'm working with the guys, I'm checking everything to keep everyone on track and everything organized. Great. Until you start to finish the work and it starts to drop off, it gets about a third of the way down that curve. <gasps> Shit, I've got no more work for my guys and you panic. You gotta keep them all busy, so what do you do? You drop off site, you jump back into the office and you quote like crazy. As you're quoting, more and more work starts to come in, starts to build again. What happens is it's picking up, you get calls, hey guys, I'm getting problems, you know, it's disorganized, the people aren't here, they're doing the wrong thing, whatever. So you stop quoting, you jump out on site. You solve all those problems, you manage all your teams. As the peak goes down, the cycle just repeats and repeats. Until there is someone other than you doing those quotes, you're gonna have that. The only alternative is to stay small, right? If you stay small enough that you can quote after you get home at night and on weekends, great, because you can keep enough work coming through consistently for the small number of guys you've got on site. Once you get bigger that you can't do that, peaks and troughs. So stay small or figure this out and get consistent workflow as you grow. What's the first thing that you need to have sorted? Marketing systems. A lot of guys say, no, I don't. I said, no, I don't. For years and years, I said, I don't need a marketing system. We were working for builders. I know who my clients are. I don't need to market to them. I'm not going to look at Facebook. They're not going to look at anything I do. And someone said, hang on, Craig, change the way you're thinking about it. Think of it as recency and frequency. When someone needs, in our case, chippies, for their job, they're going to go to someone who contacted them recently. The only way to contact them recently is to be contacting them frequently. If you frequently contact your clients, your former clients, your potential clients, then when they go looking for someone, they will think of you because you've contacted them recently. There's a bunch of other little tricks there. So if you're sending them emails, for example, in our email signature, you know, dynamic developments, carpentry and construction, in point two font in white underneath carpenters, carpentry, commercial carpenters, commercial carpentry, domestic car, everything, all the different permutations. They couldn't see it because it matched the background and it was in tiny font. Why did we do it? Because when someone went to their email server and searched for carpenters, carpentry, commercial carpenters, it searched through their email thing. It said, hey, the computer doesn't know it's in point two font in white. It just knows that the words that you're searching for are in that email. Bang, it pops it to the top. Great, that's exactly what we want. We want to be popping up when they think of us. What's the name of that company I spoke to the other week? They sounded great. I can't think of it. Why? Because I'm busy. Make sure if you speak to a potential client, send them an email, send them a text. Keep your names there. Put in the bottom of it, you know. It, it might be, for us, it may have just been dynamic developments. All right. If I didn't put carpentry construction, leaders in commercial carpentry or something like that in my email sign off, when they searched their email, SMS, it wasn't coming up. So make sure that it's there and can be found and that you're doing it regularly, right? You can have referral marketing, you can have paid marketing, you can have organic marketing, it doesn't matter. It depends on whether you're targeting clients, whether you're targeting builders. If you're targeting builders, we've got a whole lot of systems to get those emails for them. If you're targeting clients and it's a one-off each time, we'll show you how to build those systems that let you either get paid reach or organic reach and get your name out there so people are calling you to do those quotes for them. That's the first thing. Once you've got the inquiry, you need to quote it. That's part of your sales pipeline. Get that price on them and convert them. If you're doing it off plans, if someone's else giving you the plans and you're going to quote it, do that on a computer screen. If you're using highlighters and a scale ruler and a notepad, guys, I've got a message for you. It's the 21st century, right? Bring it up to date. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit painful. Take you a while to learn. Why is it so important? Because you can't get someone else to do it when you're doing it off paper. So get them, there's a great program, Australian startup called Build Exact. It's online, why is it so good? Because you can then use it on a tablet, on your phone, wherever you are to check stuff when you're on site. Be doing those plan takeoffs on a computer so that you can go back and refer to them. It's so much quicker and it's so much faster. So quick and faster, same thing. It's so much quicker, it's so much more efficient and it's so much more trainable and systemizable and replicable for someone else. If you have to go on site to do it, um, there's a number of ways you can do it. If you're doing external, so if you're doing landscaping, concreting, roofing, tiling, anything like that, often you have to go and look at the client's house, right? 
That means making an appointment, being there, then you suddenly, are you showing up on time or not? If you are showing up with them, be on time. If not, call them early to confirm. You know, half the time there at the shops, there's all sorts of hassles. It's a real pain to, to get that right. I would suggest you say, hey, look, we don't actually need you to be home. If you are, we'll knock on the door, ring the bell. But what we can do is we don't need access to your property. We can do this with a drone, right? We can provide you with the footage so you make sure we're not taking photos of anything we're not going to. We're going to be there roughly this time, tomorrow or next week or whenever. Get yourself a little drone. They're not expensive. Go and take a photo. Go and take some footage of it. You can get very accurate measurements of Google Maps. I've got some great videos I can share with you guys on how you do that, whether it's roofing, it's three-dimensional, whether it's a driveway, whether it's landscaping. Right? We'll be there. We'll knock on the door, ring the bell. If there's no one home, we're just going to put up a drone. If your neighbours see it, it's just us. We'll only take photos of your yard at the specific area. We'll share those with you. Great. We now know what it looks like and how to create some options for them. You can take those videos. You can have them turn into three-dimensional plans really cheaply. With You look at fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R, or upwork.com. There's amazing people who are offshore that will do it for you very cheaply and very effectively. You can create plans and sell the client and say, it looks incredible, and you never have to book a time to be in the house. If you do, if you're an internal trade and you have to go in the house, I will give you a great tip for using something yourself, but also see if they've got it. I use an iPhone, I use Apple and MacBooks and, and iPads. The iPhone 12 has got an amazing camera with this LIDAR feature, L-I-D-A-R. It takes a thousand little dots, I don't know how it works, but it takes amazing little measurements. You can do incredible stuff with it. There are apps out there where you can walk into the center of a room, start the app, and you literally, it's like painting the wall. You just stand there, walk, move the camera up and down. It's like taking a panoramic picture. It shows you how to do it up and down, up and down. As you walk around, it creates a three-dimensional image of that room with measurements. Now, straight away, you know from those measurements where everything is, and you can start to create three-dimensional plans as well as 2D plans for your client and what you want to do. If they have a modern phone, I don't know about Googles and Samsungs and other phones, but whatever phones have got this capability, you can send them the link to the app. You have to pay each time you get one converted, but just get them to send the files to you. You want that anyway, because you don't want them taking the photos and sending them to lots of different contractors. You want them to come to you, and you convert them into three-dimensional plans. Don't ever give away your plans, guys, until they've signed a contract and paid you money. Show them it, give them low-res images, but don't let them have it as keepers um, until you have signed up with them. You know, if, if they're going, oh, can I have a look at it? Sure, let's jump on a Zoom. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Can you send me? We, unfortunately, we can't. It's proprietary or you charge them for it, right? But you can do that. You can either get someone to walk in the room and do it yourself, or if they've got the technology in their hands, in their house, get them to do it. Send you through these images of their rooms that you can have color three-dimensional prints. Again, it's let's get that coding system working faster and more effectively for you rather than sitting there with a laser measure. And please be using a laser measure, not a tape. Laser measure, they're so cheap now. You know, you used to have to sit there with a laser measure, measure everything up, go back and mud map it and draw it out. Using this tech, it will do it for you really, really effectively. Right, so we've now got the marketing. It's driven you the lead. You're going to be able to quote it up. Okay, right now, you're, well, you've got the ability to quote it up. Right now, we need you to get that systemized so it's not always you doing the quoting. Now, an estimator costs money. If you are quoting off experience, which is, I know it will take this long, that's a big, big cost. You've got to have someone who's as good as you, as much experience as you. If they've basically got to run their own business before. If they've run their business before and failed, you don't want them. <laughs> they stuffed up their business, why would you let them near yours? So you're trying to recruit someone who's successful in business, why are they working for you? doesn't make sense. So you need to teach people who haven't got your level of experience to quote. And ideally, the lower the level of experience you can get someone quoting for you with, the cheaper it is. So how do you do that? It's systemized. It's the McDonald's system. McDonald's teaches 15-year-olds to, to produce a burger. I'm not saying they're good quality burgers, but you know that's the idea. Get it to be the lowest caliber person you can and you will reduce your costs. Now, we didn't net end up with low caliber people, but we ended up with very low cost people. We did that by getting all of our estimators to be offshore. People are like, oh, okay. Didn't cost us much, but we got incredibly talented people. Every one of our estimators had at least a master's degree, university master's degree. I'm gonna tell you my favorite story about my offshore estimators. It was a guy named Kiet from Vietnam. He was one of my very first hires as an estimator. Kiet had a PhD in civil engineering. And he worked as a lecturer at Ho Chi Minh City International University. He's now a professor at Ho Chi Minh City International University or senior lecturer. He 
was earning 150 US dollars a month. Because that's what you get paid if you work in a university in Vietnam. 150 US a month, freaking peanuts. We said, mate, work for us for 45 hours a week. We will give you 100, uh, sorry, not 150, that's what he was getting. We'll give you 600 US a month to work for us, 45 hours a week, all right? 600 US a month is 7,200 US a year. It's about 11 or 12 grand Australian, depending on where the dollar's at. 11 or 12 grand Australian, and I'm getting the guy with a PhD working for me 45 hours a week. Are you kidding me? Now that seems like it's dirt cheap for us. About four or five months in, I got this photo that I've still got of his three kids wearing this school uniform, white shirts, blue ties, blue little thingies there for the girls. Thank you, Mr. Craig, I wanted to send you this photo. Today, my kids have started at the best private school in Ho Chi Minh City, and it's because of you. Fuck me. I had changed this guy's life for 12 grand Australian a year. He had a 500% pay rise to come and work for us. He kept lecturing. He just hired an administrative assistant out of the amount we were paying him to do the marking and, and the essay setting and all that crap that he didn't enjoy. And he worked with his students and he quoted for us after hours. He then got to the point where his parents didn't have to work anymore. Thank you, Mr. Craig. My parents who live with us have stopped working. Thank you so much. And his wife didn't have to work anymore. Like he's ending up with bonus. He worked, he, he was earning about 21, 22 grand a year with us before we sold the business. Like 21, 22 grand a year for someone of that caliber is peanuts. For him, it was life changing. So you can do incredible things with systemized and your estimating that keeps that workflow rolling through. Once you're doing it, you need to measure and report. If you're not measuring and reporting, you don't know where you're at, whether it's yourself, whether it's someone in your office, whether it's someone ideally offshore, measure and report on everything because there's three things that can drive you. You're quoting is your lifeblood of your business. The more you quote, the more work you get in. There's three things that affect the amount of work that you actually do. Your win rate, your quote rate, and what we call the resolved rate. So the more dollars you quote, the more work you'll do in general, right? So for us, you know, we had a win rate of, of between 10 and 12% most of the time in commercial construction, commercial carpentry. Call it 10%. If we wanted to do another million dollars worth of work next year, we needed to increase our quote rate by $10 million. And we would get that extra million dollars worth of work. Simple. It's the other way we can do it. We can change our win rate. If we're already quoting $100 million worth of work and doing $10 million worth of work right now, we can simply change our win rate. 10 to 11%, 1% win rate on $100 million worth of quotes drives us to 11 million next year. So you can, you can put your focus on either. How do I quote more? How do I win more? The other one is less in your control. If you're doing small stuff for domestic, um, it is. You can do resi stuff and, and change your resolve rate. Does it resolve rate is how quickly do people make decisions. In bigger stuff, in commercial, um, we couldn't have any control over that. When the, when the market's booming and there's construction happening everywhere, people make decisions really fast. They want to build those apartments, get the next ones happening so they can make more money. When it's at the bottom of the market and they can't sell those apartments, they, they squeeze you, they, they try and make changes, they try and save costs, and they don't care how long it takes to award the contract because then they're not going to be building the next one straight away. So you know, we looked at what percentage of our work did we get a decision on within 12 months of quality that. When the market was down, it would be around 40%, 40-45% resolve rate. Only 40 to 45% of the quotes we had done in the last 12 months did we have a decision on within that time frame. When the market's booming, we would get decisions on 70, 75% of our work that we quoted in the last 12 months. Things just happen. So different market conditions can affect how much work you do. When you're measuring, I would like to see you guys all say no to at least 15% of the quotes you are awarded. Now that's gonna sit really difficultly. You're gonna have a lot of trouble absorbing that, some of you guys. Why is that important? If you're saying yes to everything, then you are likely to end up overcommitted and you're going to do work that you shouldn't be doing and don't want to do. That's where you end up taking projects that you lose money on. Now, can I stop you from losing money on projects? No. No matter what we did, we always found about one in 10 projects went absolutely pear-shaped, no matter what we did. No matter how closely we looked at our, our staffing, our quoting, our, our factors with our clients, something came out of the blue that we hadn't accounted for and one in 10 projects went absolutely shit-shaped. So the only way to deal with that is to allow for it in your quoting and estimating, to make sure you factor it in as a cost of doing business. But if you're saying yes to everything you get offered, you're gonna get burnt more. 
people are going to screw you more, things are going to go wrong more. You should be able to pick and choose your projects. The only way you know that you're picking and choosing your projects successfully is if you are measuring how many you say no to. Our decline rate, we called it. How many projects were we offered? Thanks, we just don't have time right now. Or we can do it for you in eight months from now. You right? Oh, I can't wait eight months. I know. But it's just a nice way of saying, look, we can't do it. You have to be declining a reasonable percentage of your work to know that you have a healthy enough quoting system that allows you to grow while still declining and still cherry picking the work. If you can do all of that, you will start to get consistent workflow. Now, there's a bit of a process and obviously a few steps along the way. That's what we're teaching. We, we show you guys, we're, we're taking guys and shifting their mindsets from being self-employed tradies to thinking like businessmen and entrepreneurs. These steps along the way are the things we're going to show you. How to get marketing systems that work for wherever you are, whether you're dealing with small resi, builders, big builders, whatever segment you're in. How do you get that consistent inquiry flow? What are your quoting systems that let you get the price back? There's another step actually in there that I missed. Once you've quoted, which is, you know, you'll hear in business terms, you pitch the client. Okay, you, you've quoted for the client. Between then, when they get your pitch and your quote and when they make a decision, there's this gap. That's the indecision period. You need to own the indecision period. You need to be so dominant in that gap that it becomes just a no-brainer that they have to use you. So you send them tips, information, ideas. Hey, you know, I've seen that new kitchen that you want to install. How about this? Have you looked at that? Have you thought about amazing things? Here's videos. Till I go, this guy's all over it. If it's for commercial builders, we used to send them you know, shiny folders with our quotes in it. How great are we? We'd recorded, because this is back in the day, before you judge me, back in the day when DVDs were a thing, we'd recorded things on how to do quality assessments on frames, fixes, decks, cladding. We'd, we'd had them printed up, CD, uh, DVDs that were stamped and colored, put in a, a folder with a color insert in it and plastic wrapped. We got them done 500 at a time, put them on the like post them. Hey, Mr. Project Manager, Mr. Director, we know you know this stuff, but this is for your new staff to train them on how to QA a frame. They put it on their shelf down the spine, dynamic developments. Oh, it's on their desk now, it's on their bookshelf, our business name all the time. You know, we did cheeky little things that were, were afterwards. You could get everything printed. You know, we had travel mugs. Hey, this is something they're gonna keep, we had pens. One thing that I wanted to do, we never actually got around to it, was squishy stress balls. You can get them printed. What we were gonna do is we were gonna wait two months after we'd lost any job, and because they flat pack, um, so that when you release them from the envelope, they're into a ball, you, you only have to put them in an envelope, so you still only pay the, the stamp fee, you don't have to pay a, a parcel post fee. And on it, it was gonna say dynamic developments on one side, the other side it was gonna say, are the carpenters giving you stress? Question mark. Should have used dynamic. <laughs> Just as a fun thing for them to keep on their desk, remember you and, and remember you for next time so that they come back to you. you know, in anything you can do, that's, that's afterwards, but anything you can do in that indecision period will make it so that they want to use you. Guys, these are the things I'm going to recommend that you get onto straight away. If there's anything else you want, get in touch. I'd love to have a chat with you. Click the link below and we'll, we'll uh, send you any, through, any templates, anything we can, but jump on if you wanna book a call and we'll talk to you about how we can take you from thinking and acting like a self-employed tradesman to being that business owner who's got your quoting systems, your workflow, um, all sussed and all sorted, who is getting to the point where you're building wealth and working towards financial freedom. I look forward to chatting to you soon.